Remember I showed you how we can clean the gravel around the French drain because the pressure of this thing is so tremendous that it pushes through the holes of the slotted pipe and it cleans the gravel as well. It, it's amazing. All these people that say don't put the pressure washer down there, it messes up your virgin system, they're wrong. And you know we're showing you every day how this works. Hey, good morning. Chuck here with Apple Drains. Today, let's take a look at channel drain. There's all kinds of channel drain. We're going to show you this newer channel drain. This is a two inch channel drain. We've got micro channel drain. We've got five inch NDS channel drain. We're going to show you how to clean it and also how to install it. And some of the best practices of where to install it, where not to install it. Let's take a look. So there's many different types of channel drain, and it's readily available, Lowe's, Home Depot, Ace. Um, they usually come in 10 foot sections, and sometimes they have you know, the polypropylene grate on it like this. Sometimes they have a steel grate. There's all kinds, I mean, there's all kinds. This is five inch NDS channel drain, and it works great you know, across a driveway, across pavers, um, around the pool, it's a little bit overkill for the pool, but it does work. And one of the things I wanted to show you here before I show you the next piece is so many calls that I come out to and I see the homeowner has done this. At the end of their pavers or their patio, they've set channel drain down in the ground. And of course it runs off and discharges to daylight someplace and that's all good. But the, they complain about it because what happens is it floats up. It's like a channel, it's a boat. Water gets underneath of it and it floats up. There's really no way to secure this channel drain in the ground. Um, it really does not work. It's made to be in concrete. And the concrete pours across it and you can see there's a little lip that holds it all in place. It can work in pavers, but it's much better in concrete uh, for, for, that, for this particular piece of channel drain. Let's take a look at what you could do. Still not recommended, but you could do that. So this is also NDS channel drain and it comes in a, what is this, four foot, three foot section. And it's already got the grates. You can see they're already screwed down in place. Looks real good. This particular channel drain, if you had to, you could use some pins. You can see they've got spots for pins and you could trench along here in the dirt and put pins to get down there and hold this in place. Would I recommend that? Still no, because water is much more powerful than the pins. <laughs> when Once that groundwater comes up, it's just going to raise this up just like a boat and it's going to lift it up and of course it no longer functions or you're going to trip over it at the end of your pavers or your patio. So you could do it, but strongly recommended that you do not. If you're going to put a channel drain inside of the pavers, you need to pave around them. And we suggest that these be set in concrete. So there should be a, a base of concrete that you set this down into and that concrete holds it in place. A lot of work to put in a channel drain. When you buy this section, you know, at the, at the hardware store, it comes with pieces. And you can see we've got an end cap, we've got a cap to connect things together to make another piece to hold them together and another end cap. All of these things are going to be needed and you're going to need a whole bunch of them. This is a very expensive way to install channel drain. Remember, it needs to be set into concrete. Without the concrete, this will float up like a boat every time. Okay, so we're getting ready to set the channel drain. The first thing that we did, of course, showed you how we hooked it all up. But now we're going to protect the grates by putting some blue painter's tape across it. That just keeps the concrete from getting down in there and they can easily pull that right off when we're done. Remember I showed you the connection there of the Y. We've already kind of covered that up. We'll do the same thing on the other side over here. Cover that with the painter's tape and then we're going to be setting that one you know, to the proper grade and then concreting it in. So here we're mixing up you know, the concrete that's holding that channel drain down in place. We've got several things that we use as a guide. Remember that 
pavers are going to be put back up to grade. So in other words, we're not setting the, the channel drain in concrete, which is a better way to do it, but it looks pretty nice when you put pavers all the way across. So the only thing that you see is the channel drain. Okay, so we just got you know about four feet more to go. <clears throat> Remember how we're doing this is we're not bringing this concrete to grade. They're gonna put pavers back. So basically we're holding that channel drain down in place. We've got a real nice pitch, you know, just perfectly level coming across the existing channel or existing pavers, sorry. And so when they put the pavers back, you can see my trowel, they'll have to cut to size, but it'll fit perfectly right here and lean right up against, you can kind of see, I'll give you the example. See, we're perfect all the way across. So they'll have a nice fit all the way down through. Same thing on this side. And it really is, it might seem like that's a lot of work, but it's really quick with a concrete saw, you cut pavers in, in a matter of seconds. So we've got a nice channel drain going on. We're almost finished with this side, then we'll kind of sweep it off a little bit. And then we just have another 10 feet to go on the smaller garage. Again, this was a tedious job. So, you know, this was a fairly large job, um, something that the homeowner could definitely tackle themselves. It's not hard to do, um, as long as you think of it as smaller jobs, you know, we did, you know, quite a bit of work here but break it down make it three four smaller jobs the channel drain is the tedious part of all of this because it's a finish and it would be like finishing the kitchen putting the cabinets in it's something that you will always see underground drains hey they could do whatever they want nobody can see them but if you got a finished product you got to take your time okay this is micro channel drain and this is the most common channel drain you'll find this around your pool around your lanai um, maybe it's on your you're just on your pool deck or on the deck in the backyard. And what it is, it's inch and a half pipe with a square grate across the top. And you can see it. This one's square. There's an insert that holds these together. It just slides inside one, slides inside the other. And what happens is that these tend to fill up with dirt because nobody ever maintains them. So if you were gonna have these in your patio, that's great. They, they take tons of water. They'll handle hurricane force water, but you've got to maintain the system. So over here, we've got one already put together. We've got the insert inside to hold it. You can see it's an old one. They've painted over all of the tops of the grate. And of course, that cr contributed to their problem dramatically. What we're going to do is we're going to send a jetter down here to show you how to clean this. Because if you can get this clean, It'll save you thousands of versus cutting this out of the concrete and repairing it or replacing so, it. So this is a round inch and a half and you can see the insert. What it does, it's a piece of inch and a half pipe. It's about six inches long and it just slides in one side and then it slides in the other. And this will be put together. You can lay it any way you want, but once you put it together, then you set it down into your new area where you're gonna pour concrete. Don't let the size of this fool you. This inch and a half pipe works great. This handles so much water, it's unbelievable. Can we get more water with a bigger channel drain? Of course, but this handles more than enough water around your pool and it looks so good. So recently, NDS came out with this thing, it's called a Slim Channel Drain Kit. You see it? Slim Channel Drain Kit. And they say it's for patios and walkways. It handles heavy rain, small areas with foot traffic. Really, it's a great little piece of pipe, it really is. And it's got the grates that pop on the top. They can pop them off and clean it. And it looks really nice. It's a little bit bigger than inch and a half, right? It's actually two inches wide you know, at the bottom of the channel drain, and it would handle a little bit more water. I think that it looks much better than this, you know, in the, around the pool and I, the patio, great little kit. This little piece right here, I think is what, four feet? Um, and it cost, uh, I think it was 40 bucks. So a lot of money for these channel drains. But if you get these installed properly, they'll work forever and ever. Okay, remember how I said that 
the channel drain needs to be set down into concrete and you can see this is just a a dirt drive you know we've got mulch across the drive and it's really tempting here's a low spot right here where water pools up it's really tempting to just set this down in the ground and let it discharge because it's off it runs downhill off to the side on that side and it runs downhill off to the side on this side really tempting to set this down in the ground and try to pin it but it will not hold do not do that do not lay it along the side either you'll have the same problem it'll just float up Okay, here's an old piece of uh, microchannel drain, and the installers here, this is from a, a previous install that we took it all out because it was totally collapsed inside and just worthless. But the installer, the original installer, they did a nice job. This is how you would make a corner. You need to make a nice miter, see that? It miters together. What holds that in place is concrete, that's all. So as water floods across the deck, drops in, it would drain both directions. The problem with this is not a problem, but the problem is, is cleaning it because when we send the cable or the hose from the jetter, we can only get to this point. So that means we have to go to the other end and start at that end and come through to get it clean. So it's several cleanings to get this thing open. Next we're going to go ahead and clean a backed up piece of this channel drain so you can see how well the mini jet actually works and believe me we can save you thousands and thousands if you decide to try to clean it if, if we can clean that line versus replacing it it's truly thousands in savings okay remember I said it's really tempting to put this across you know the, the dirt driveway and it would work but as soon as that groundwater got high, this would flood and push that channel drain up, plus the weight of all the vehicles, not a good idea. So what do you need to do here if you've got a low spot in the driveway? You could fill the area you know, with more sand and soil, bring that to a better grade, or you could put a catch basin in here, or you could do a French drain, gravel perforated pipe, uh, lots of gravel, but you need a good discharge. Usually here we're gonna end up with a sump pump for the discharge, not just let it run out onto the ground. It's got to go someplace. It got, it has to go to daylight. The sump pump is considered daylight. You can't just send it into the ground. And that's the problem with most of the lanai's. They put this, you know, channel drain all the way across. And of course it's too close to the house, number one. But where it discharges, it just goes into the ground. There's no place for that water to go. And of course the sand fills these things up in just a matter of months. So we're gonna simulate cleaning this thing, and you can see this thing is just packed. You see Chance trying to push that down, pull that back out of there. See all that dirt on the end of it? I mean, it's just packed full of sand, and this is what happens on most of the lanai's in Florida and across the country for that matter. They just get packed full of sand, and there's no way that you're gonna get this clean without a mini jetter. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna stick it in there. We're gonna fire up the jet. Got the pressure washer running. And it should start to pull itself through there as it goes. Okay, you can see the jet, how it's, how it's going through there. You can see it, how quickly it goes through. It's coming all the way down. You can see it pushing out the water. And you can see it coming out the other end. So now the secret is to pull it back slowly. Because we want to pull back, we want to get that debris out of the line. Keep it running, always. Keep the pressure on your pressure washer because without it, it's not gonna pull that dirt back. But you can see it's pulling all that debris out of there, looking really good. Let's come back here to the end and you can see all the debris coming out. See all that mud coming out of that line? You can see where the pressure is, right there. It's just pulling all the sand back out of this line completely. We'll go through this a couple of times to get this really good clean. Go slow, go slow. Start over again. The mini jet is very powerful. It's just 
much like a jet engine. Those those uh, nozzles on the back of the those nozzles on the back of the jet they push this down through the line. And if you let go of it, it'll just go right through there so fast. But we need to go slow. So you can see it, and it comes, you'll see that it'll just push that all that dirt right out of that line completely. Remember I showed you how we can clean the gravel around the French drain because the pressure of this thing is so tremendous that it pushes through the holes of the slotted pipe and it cleans the gravel as well. It, it's amazing. All these people that say don't put the pressure washer down there, it messes up your virgin system, they're wrong. And you know we're showing you every day how this works. We're gonna go all the way to the end. You can go faster. You go all the way to the end. And you see it, it's just blowing all that water or all that sand right out of there. Now we're gonna pull it back real slow. You do this a couple of times and you've got a nice clean line. And you can easily test it with your garden hose. You know, just you let it run. Remember, channel drain across your lanai is pretty level. And so what it does is it kind of fills up. Once it fills up to a point, it begins to flow. So looking really good. Come on back. You can see that jet just pulling off, pushing all of that dirt out of that line. And you can see we've got a real clean flow of water now. It's looking really good, really good. So look at all the debris that that pulled out of that line. I'm gonna step back. We're gonna pull it on out of there. Come on out. Perfect. So now you can see all the debris that came out of this line. All we need to do is just rinse this off. On your patio, there's gonna be some stainings on both sides of this channel drain. You need to wash that off directly because it will stain that patio, especially if you've got a painted uh, lanai, which is what most people do. They put this texture paint down to make it look good, and it's great, but we're ready to go here. So again, the reason that your, your micro channel drain goes bad is number one, where the discharges is on both sides, on both sides of that line, however long it is, could be 60 feet, doesn't matter. Usually these installers, they do a great job of installing, but they just put it right out to the end of your lanai, which is usually just at grade. And it's, it's below grade. In other words, there's no place for the water to go. The water has to have a discharge to daylight. It has to. So when we come out, we clean the line, we can get this open. 99% of the time, 99%. The other times that we cannot get it open is because it's actually collapsed, it's actually broken. But the problem is always gonna be, <laughs> we need to put a catch basin at below, below the bottom of the channel drain. That means we're down you know, eight, 10 inches right there, and then we've got a discharge to daylight. So here in Florida, we're going to run out of fall almost directly so it usually needs to go to a sump pump and that's how you achieve the perfect grade um, in any yard is with a sump pump because the sump pump sets two feet below grade and we can run that line down two feet have so much fall and the sump pump lifts it up and sends it out but look at all that debris i mean there's tons of it through there tons of debris it's all sand and concrete paint all these things that mini jetter will clean that line
Hey, good morning. Chuck here at Apple Drains. Today we're down in Sarasota, Florida. And as you can see, we're going to cut out a micro channel drain. And these are the inch and a quarter or inch and a half drains that run around a pool deck. So we've already cut that. Next, we go ahead and try to get some of this concrete up that's kind of a mush. Just use the flat shovel. Try to get up as much as we can so we don't keep tracking it all. So basically what we're doing is we're pulling out that concrete. We just use a pry bar and um, we do have our jackhammer available, as you can see, but the pry bar works far better than the jackhammer. In the corners, we'll probably have to use that hammer to, because it's poured right up against the foundation. They put this channel drain against the foundation. Typical Florida home. It looks great, but yeah, you know, it should be a couple inches away, but that's how they do it. So once you have it all cleaned out, you know, get all your debris out of there, we're just gonna rinse off the area We'll let this dry for just you know a little teeny bit because we want to keep working but we just don't want to have such a mess when we pour our concrete back micro channel drain is not very deep and even at any channel drain it doesn't matter it, it sits at the bottom of the, the concrete it, it's all the deeper it needs to be if you take out too much dirt you've got to put something in there to fill it so it can set upon it so we've got plenty of concrete what we'll do is we'll use a dry mix just to level that out and our micro, micro channel drain will set on that concrete. So this is the slowest part of the job, just to clean up before you can pour any cement. It's got to be nice and clean. We've got a, got a good corner over here, looking real good. We'll wash all that off. Let's take a look at the discharge. So right here, there's a, there's a screen lanai, a piece of aluminum, strong steel right here. What we do is we just pound it out the old channel drain if you can see that you see the little tunnel underneath of there we pound that out and we're going to slide our new piece right through there all it does is discharge right to the outside of the lanai outside the so tunnel. now we're just cleaning out the barrel because we had it really messy we need to have a nice clean barrel for the concrete and you hear that blower back here what we're doing is we're just kind of drying off the area a little bit it helps. Oh yeah. We're just blowing the area off. And that trench is where we'll put the new micro channel drain. So putting the concrete back into the channel drain is really tedious work. You can't put pressure on the channel drain. You can't really even touch it. You just gotta pack it in on the sides and <clears throat> make sure that you get underneath of the thing when you uh, Trow it down in so that it stays put. Yeah, always stuff it down in. So you hit the bottom and you see how far that sunk down. So now we've got to put more. And it's just a real slow process. We'll get it all in here and then we'll finish it off and we'll be all done. So as you go along, you can see it looks messy, but remember that there's tape on the top. So we just keep on going. We'll come back, we'll wipe off the tape when we're all done. Let it harden and then you just pull off that tape and you've got a real pretty channel drain that goes through. So we also cleaned the downspout drain because it's been overflowing and of course causing that channel drain just to get even more debris in it. We found out that that line comes right out here and you can see the pop up and it was just full of mud and roots and debris. And now it's got a pretty good flow coming down through here. So we'll put the pop-up back on, show the homeowner where it's at. Hey, this is Chuck with Apple Drains reminding you that if you believe you can do something, I guarantee you can do it. Have a great day.